that we are meeting virtually is testimony to the fact this year will be like any other we've ever seen in the college or the university. And I usually begin by saying that I trust everyone had a good summer filled with rest, relaxation, and good adventures. Yeah, but I know better than that. Most of you spent your vacation prepping for new classes or revamping old classes and new modalities, measuring and taping classrooms to keep everyone six feet apart, zooming into hastily called virtual meetings, often with crying kids and barking dogs to add to the ambience, and trying your best to hold on to the remnants of your sanity within the confines of your homes and backyards. I hope you were all successful in that. Still, I do hope that you did find some time to enjoy some beautiful weather this summer, to take a drive, if not a real trip, to enjoy a long hike in the woods and read a few good books. We all needed some time to recuperate after a spring semester straight out of Dante. In the aftermath of last semester and our summer of confinement, I must admit that it was both exhilarating and a little unnerving to return to the office this Monday and have actual encounters with real live bodies again. I actually had to put on pants and a tie for the first time in nearly half a year. Seeing faculty in the hallways, staff in the offices, and students on campus, mostly masked, was actually quite comforting. And Sunday evening, the sounds of band camp made it all the way to my backyard. After so much disruption these past months, it was strangely reassuring to hear the strains of the fight song rising from campus once again. So again, I'm so pleased to see my Potter College colleagues back as hale and hearty and cantankerous as ever. And even if I cannot actually see all of you in person right now, you are still a sight for sore eyes. Welcome back. As we do every year, let's begin with some farewells and introductions. I noted earlier that the College of Arts and Letters has seen a tremendous turnover in our faculty and staff over the past several years. We have had some significant transitions this year as well. Janine Cherry completed transitional retirement in the School of, of Media after 32 years. Professor Bill Scott, former symphony director completed transitional retirement after a, after a long and distinguished musical career that included 17 years at WKU. Paula Williams retired as office associate in, pot, in philosophy and religion after 26 years. That one may be the most remarkable given that she had to put up with me in the department for all of those years. Living with the divines and the philosophers is not necessarily an easy life. We're also mourning the deaths of some of our own. Just within the past couple of weeks, we lost two part-time instructors, Mary Dillingham and Justin Osborne. Mary passed away a couple evenings ago. She was wife of George Dillingham, a longtime professor in the history department. Mary was a part-time member of our English department teaching 055 and serving as an administrative assistant to the WKU Writing Project. She also was a longtime teacher for the Bowling Green Schools. Justin Osborne was a double alum of WKU who earned a BA in music and social studies and an MA in history. Justin was an excellent guitarist and a beloved teacher of music appreciation for many years, both on the main campus and South Campus. Justin helped many students to get the start they needed to their academic careers. His life ended way too soon. I'm also sad to announce that Professor Emeritus Donald Tuck died about three weeks ago. Don came to WKU in 1969, moving from instructor to professor in the course of his career, and was appointed Professor Emeritus on his retirement. His work was primarily in the history of religion, especially Asian religions. I remember him well as a mentor who was always very kind to this rookie when I arrived on campus. We're also saying hello to new colleagues today. We have three new full-time permanent tenure track faculty. Dr. Sarah Herbert is assistant professor of music in trumpet and jazz. Dr. Herbert hails from Portland, Oregon, holds degrees from Indiana University, the University of New Mexico, and the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, where she completed her doctorate in trumpet performance. She has performed with diverse classical jazz and commercial ensembles throughout the country, including the Wyoming Symphony, 
Fillmore Brass Band and Norwegian Cruise Lines. In 2016, she was the recipient of a Presser Foundation Graduate Research Award where she commissioned, recorded, and premiered three new works for trumpet and guitar quartet. Dr. Matt McCurry, Associate Director of Bands and Director of the Big Red Marching Band. Dr. McCurry comes to WKU following an extensive public school teaching career in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he built one of the largest and most comprehensive band programs in the country. He holds degrees in music education from Carson Newman University and a Doctor of Music Arts in Conducting from the West Virginia University. He is in demand as a clinician for regional, state, and honor band festivals throughout the country. Dr. Nancy Dinan joins the English department with an MFA in creative writing from the Ohio State University and a PhD in English literature with a creative dissertation from Texas Tech University. She is the managing, former managing editor for Iron Horse Literary Review and her work has appeared in the Paris Review Daily, Arts and Letters, Texas Observer, the Cincinnati Review and others. Her novel, Things You Would Know If You Grew Up Around Here, has long been long listed for the 2020 Center for Fiction First Novel Prize. The short list will be announced this fall. Others joining the team this year in new roles or temporary assignments. And I always hate to do this because most assuredly I'm gonna miss someone given all the changes we have seen this summer. So if your name is not on this list, uh, please let me know. I'll try to correct it later uh, and let other folks know. And I, I apologize in advance. I think we've gotten most everyone, but let me give a shot at, uh, at a few of our, our new folks here. Ms. Kara Cordell is office coordinator in the Department of Music. She joined in March of 2020 just in time to send everybody home. After spending time in Gordon Ford College, she found her true calling in home in the Department of Music in Potter College. She hasn't personally met everyone yet, and we're still waiting for some sort of normalcy, but she's been an invaluable member of the team during this crisis and is a great addition to the department. Katrina Pearson joins us as a visiting instructor in history. After stints working for the National Park Service, teaching in Tennessee and flying with American Airlines. Dr. Katie McCulkin, McCurkin joins us as a visiting instructor in history. Katie recently completed a PhD in public history at Middle Tennessee State University, exploring the commemoration of the troubles in Northern Ireland. Catherine Kirkpatrick is a recent MA graduate, excellent scholar who has presented at our national conference. She will be a one-term instructor in the Department of Communication. Dr. Blair Thompson is back from a two-year sojourn. I didn't say exile. A sojourn as the acting director of the School of Teacher Education. Welcome home, Blair. Sean Ward is the Dugas family professor and is now co-director of Image West, an all-around versatile teacher and good guy in the, in the department in the building. Kara Williams Glenn is a new instructor of graphic design and co-director of Image West. Since 2017, she's been director of the student-run advertising PR agency, Image West. And while in that position, she taught for both the communication and art departments and somehow found the time to go back to school and earn her MFA in media design. She now serves as co-director of the agency while serving as professional residence for art. They're very excited to have her back. Leslie Fox is an instructor of English. Leslie has a BA from WKU in creative writing with a second major in gender and women's studies. She also has an MFA from WKU. And while she has previously taught part-time for us only a short time, she has already distinguished herself as an instructor in terms of student engagement. In the Potter College Dean's Office, uh, we've had a change. Ms. Sierra Waller has stepped down as Student Services Coordinator for the college to take a position in the Center for Teaching and Innovative Learning. Ms. Carol Jordan, our 2019 University Award winner for advising, and Ms. Kirsten, Kirsten Kellenberger and ACDC have graciously agreed to pick up some of the slack, helping to coordinate advising efforts across the college. We're going to miss Sierra a lot but we're very grateful that Carol and Kirsten are gonna step up and give us a hand. We've also had leadership transitions. In the Department of Modern Languages, 
Laura McGee has returned to the faculty after 11 years as department head. Thank you. Laura oversaw, not thank you that she's going back, but thank you for your service. She oversaw some of the major changes to that department, particularly as general education requirements changed and we saw the growth of Arabic and Chinese. It's been quite a transition. And so she's returning. And Dr. Alex Poole has stepped in as interim direct, uh, department head from the Department of English, where he specializes in linguistics and second language acquisition. I'm very grateful that Alex has decided to accept this appointment for this year. In the School of Media, Robert Deidel has finally returned to the faculty. He's been trying to do this for years. He was 12 years as department head in the history uh, department, and then I prevailed upon him to serve for what turned out to be three years as the interim head of the School of Media. He's finally gotten to go back, and uh, we're very grateful for his service. In his stead, Ron DeMars has stepped in as the new interim director of the School of Media. Ron is starting his 15th year at the university. He just earned his uh, full professor position. Uh, we're very grateful and excited about Ron's leadership in the school. In philosophy and religion, this summer Elizabeth Gish left WKU to take a post at the Kettering Institute in Dayton, Ohio. Associate Dean Merrill Price didn't seem to have enough to do, and so we asked her and she graciously agreed to wear another hat as interim department head through the fall semester. So at this time we also take the time to offer recognitions for our faculty and staff throughout the college who have been successful or achieved notoriety over the past year. One of the things that's most important to what we do as a faculty is to, uh, to engage in faculty governance and to promote and tenure our faculty as they move through the system. And this year we have a great crop of newly promoted and tenured faculty that I want to introduce to you and congratulate on their success. Folks moving into the position of associate professor and earning tenure this year. In the Department of English, Allison Youngblood. In Folk Studies and Anthropology, Kate Horrigan. In History, Jeffrey Minor. In Modern Languages, Yufin Chang. In music, Ryan St. John. In philosophy and religion, Sophia Arjuna and James Barker. In the School of Media, Luke Pennington. In theater and dance, Julie Barber. Congratulations to all of you. That is a major achievement in your professional career and we're thrilled for you. Also, moving from associate to full professor this year, we have two. In the Department of Music, Scott Harris is now a professor of music. And in the School of Media, as I mentioned before, Ron DeMars has been promoted to professor. Congratulations to both of you. And moving from instructor one to instructor two, we have three individuals who have been with us and succeeded admirably over these many years. In modern languages, Yang Lu, and Yerdy Vandermolen, and in theater and dance, Ms. Carol Jordan. Congratulations to the three of you. The work that you do is amazing and necessary for our success. To all of you who succeeded this year in moving through tenure and or promotion, congratulations. We couldn't be prouder of you. This spring semester, of course, uh, brought with it an interruption in our normal festivities and recognitions. And every year uh, we recognize college faculty award winners and university award winners. Unfortunately, the pandemic prevented us from recognizing university award winners. But we have three. Uh, we have faculty award winners to recognize in all of our areas. First of all, for excellence in teaching, John Connolly, He's an instructor in the Department of English. John began his career at South Campus and has been with the English Department on the main campus now for the past two years. His students find him to be an engaging and challenging teacher. He's active in practice and research in the area of pedagogy 
and he's doing some very important work on the narrative legacy of Jonesville. We're very happy that John will be back with us for another year. John, congratulations, well earned. In the area of excellence in research and creative activity, Mike Nichols, professor, Department of Art. Mike is one of the scholars at the university achieving ever greater international recognition and is someone who's situated to help place WKU on a global stage. Impressively, Mike's reputation is growing internationally in not one, but two disciplines, silver point drawing and fresco painting. It is not an exaggeration to say that it would be career defining for any artist to achieve the level of accomplishment in one of the areas that Mike Nichols is now achieving in both. Mike, congratulations. We're thrilled that you're here. Keep up the good work. Recognition for excellence in service. Danielle Lovell, Associate Professor, Department of Sociology and Criminology. I don't think I could say anything better than what she has said when she accepted this award. And she says, being located at our regional campus for the last 10 years of my career has allowed me to help place-bound students understand that applying a sociological lens to their community can help solve the issues our towns in Kentucky face. Through my active participation in the community, students see sociology in action. Having a professor who dedicates their model of education to public service opens new doors for them. Danielle, congratulations. Thank you for the work you're doing, not only for us, but for them. We're very proud of you. The Award for Excellence in Student Advising goes to Mac McCarroll, Professor, School of Media. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone on this campus who cares more or works more tirelessly for our university, our college, and certainly the School of Media than Mac. And while plenty of our faculty and staff have drawn his infamous ire, including myself on more than one occasion, our students tend to see only dedication, patience, and a genuine interest in their academic careers. Mac doesn't see advising as simply building a schedule. Rather, it's about connecting each student and preparing them for success in college and in life. Mac, I'm glad you're on our side of the team. Congratulations, keep up the good work. Each year, the Office of the Provost and Division of Academic Affairs invites nominations to recognize faculty currently at the rank of professor who serve the university with distinction and have an outstanding record of achievement in all areas, teaching, research, and service. Please join me in congratulating our two newest members of the community of the university distinguished professors, Dr. Rodney King, Professor of Biology, and our own, Ms. Yvonne Petkus, Professor of Art. Professor Petkus has served WKU with distinction for nearly two decades, earning the rank of professor in 2012. She has an outstanding record of internationally recognized research and creative activity, and her sustained records of outstanding teaching and service have made her a well-respected leader at WKU. As a testament to her commitment to excellence, she has been nominated multiple times for faculty awards in all three categories of teaching, research, creative activity, and service, winning the Potter College Award and University Level Award for Research and Creative Activity in 2015, and winning the 2003 College Award for Teaching while still an assistant professor. Her research production, exhibitions, papers, and lectures is almost incomprehensible uh, for someone working at an institution that does not have the level of support of an R1. Her output is just prodigious. Yvonne maintains a rigorous practice in both drawing and painting and exhibits and has published works in both disciplines. Says her department head, Yvonne is someone we, who we are proud as a department to put forward as representing the best of what we would all like to be in scholarship, teaching and service and in her extremely human, fair, and sympathetic interactions with the world. I couldn't say that better. Yvonne, we are so proud of you. We are so happy for you. Congratulations. I'd also like to congratulate and thank a few other folks. 
And again, this is not an exhaustive list because folks have been doing things all across the college and in departments and in the university over the course of the past year, but just a few to, uh, to call out for a moment. Ann Farrell, thank you for serving as chair of the Graduate Council in 19, 2019 and 20. You did this while editor in chief, working with your editorial team in the department who just completed a five year term producing the Journal of American Folklore, the disciplinary journal, the quarterly journal of the American Folklore Society. Thank you to Julie Shadowen for serving as chair of the University Senate and coming back for more. Back to governance, even under the best of circumstances, like walking a tight rope over Niagara while juggling knives and reading Kafka. Thank you, Julie. Thank you to Patty Mentor, who is completing a term as representative to the State House. Thank you for continuing to fight the good fight. Thank you to Tony Harkins, who stepped in as acting department head in history during the spring term. Yes, that term. Talk about a baptism by fire. Thank you, Tony. Congratulations to Kapung, Laura McGee, and Melinda Edgerton, who overcame long odds to earn another four-year grant for the nationally recognized Chinese flagship program. There's not another institution in the country of our size and scope who has this achievement. It is really remarkable. Congratulations to David Pollack, Jay Stotman, Justin Carlson, and the rest of the staff and researchers in the Kentucky Archaeological Society for a tremendously successful year with more than $355,000 in grants and contracts. Kudos to the Kentucky Museum for two recent grants, one from the Luce Family Foundation, $155,000, and the Institute for Museum and Library Sciences, Inspire Grant, to forward their efforts in expanding collection management and environmental control support of their archive and storage facility. The Kentucky, as a side note, the Kentucky Museum will be open to faculty and staff, but not to the general public. Uh, if you're interested, contact them to arrange visits for you and your students uh, through their or online portal site. And finally, I'd like to send a shout out to Rob Hale, who moved this year from English department head to become associate provost for faculty and academic excellence or something like that. I refuse to call him your excellency. He stepped into a we'll say a windstorm, and I shudder to think where we would be right now as an institution without his humane and sage leadership in academic affairs throughout our current crisis. Thank you doesn't begin to cover it, my friend. For the past several years, we've also recognized staff members who consistently go above and beyond the call of duty to keep the college up and running. The Unsung Hero Award is intended to thank and recognize folks who may not always get the public appreciation they deserve. This year, I'd like to celebrate the work of someone without whom we quite literally would not be meeting today. I often feel like a dinosaur in a rapidly changing world of techno mammals, and I am not the only one. This person keeps us plugged in, uploaded, and online. He is a roving human hotspot who often logs more than 20,000 steps a day, traipsing up and down this hill, helping faculty and hapless administrators like myself across 12 departments and seven buildings. I really have no idea what we do without him. Kurt Fattick, without a doubt, you are the unsung hero of Potter College this, and indeed every year. Thank you. I'd like to end today by looking behind and ahead a little bit. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you again for the truly remarkable work of the faculty and staff in the spring when we were forced to pivot to remote, remote learning in March. It was a Herculean feat that you all have come, completed with grace, professionalism, and generally good humor. I continue to be amazed at the stories I hear from students and department heads about the innovative ways that the faculty found to keep learning not just alive, but thriving during this difficult time. It took lots of energy, time, and imagination to remake that educational experience on the fly. And I cannot begin to tell you how proud I have been of all the efforts that you made, those of you who constitute this college. 
And as I alluded to at the start of this presentation, I know that your hard work has continued over the summer during your supposed downtime. The amount of preparation necessary to restart the campus has been staggering and at times overwhelming. Going into the fall semester in the midst of a pandemic under the duress of a financial crisis means that everyone has been asked to shoulder more than ever before. Let no one forget that faculty have been asked to teach more while being paid less. Staff forced to work remotely does not mean that they work less. It often means they work more, more hours across time that they usually they previously had as their own. Make no mistake, these are difficult times to be in the business of education. The budget reductions of the past several years have hit the college hard. In my 2018 convocation address, I bemoaned the fact that we'd had to surrender $400,000 in operating funds, four staff lines, and 12 faculty lines. Those seem like glory days in retrospect, because it has not gotten any better. Last year, we had to return $1.2 million in one-time money from the college budget and cut the same amount from our permanent budget going into this year. And this year, that number has risen to an additional $1.5 million, plus $250,000 in vacant lines and all of our travel funds across the entire college. We have slashed the part-time budget and severely reduced the pay for or let go of many of our transitional retirees. This has not been easy. That is the reason we were forced to adjust permanent faculty workloads for this year in anticipation of further reductions in state appropriations and a very volatile student enrollment environment. And in the midst of this pandemic, and in the midst of this budget crisis, we have also witnessed the social disease across our nation and the world. The murders of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and so many others at the hands of our police have revealed the metastasized cancer of racism at both individual and institutionalized levels. That evil cannot remain unchallenged and unresolved. Black lives matter. And until they matter, no lives of any color will be truly valued or protected in this society. As individuals, as citizens, and as faculty and staff of this college, we must be dedicated to doing all we can to fight the disease that is within each of us and in our collective midst. It is the right and moral thing to do. And I'm very grateful to Fabian Alvarez and the members of the college uh, DEI committee who have met over this summer to begin helping the college develop a comprehensive plan to address these issues to promote systematic and sustainable change. You'll be hearing more from me and them soon about our efforts, including a possible name change for the college. Over the next several weeks, I will report out to you about the larger issues of budget reductions, workload, and diversity and inclusion work being done in the college. Indeed, you'll be hearing more from me than you're accustomed to doing so. I want to keep you as informed as possible, answering the questions you're already forwarding to me as we're talking now. We have many challenges. There is no doubt about that. But I want to encourage all of us, including myself, not to be paralyzed by fear. Life moves, moves on, and we are you are continuing to do amazing work in the midst of this storm. Despite these challenges, we are still in the business of educating students and changing lives. And that is a noble calling. Yesterday, I attended a portion of the new faculty orientation and I was reminded that I attended my orientation 30 years ago this week. That was a lifetime ago. And you might see from my, uh, my card here, uh, that I looked a little bit different then uh, than I do now. Um, green does not begin to cover it. And all the things considered, all things considered, it has been a good life and a career thanks to good colleagues, bright students, dedicated staff, and yes, even some very supportive administrators. I'm very grateful for that. This year will be my last as the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters. 
My term expires next June 30, and I will exit after 17 years in this office in one capacity or another. It is time. Provost and President are in conversation now about how the transition will occur and the timing of the search. It has certainly been my honor to serve all of you these past years. I'm not sure what comes next, but I am looking forward to the next chapter of my professional life. Thank you for your support, friendship, and for always challenging me to be more and to do better. Having said the above, I don't want you to think that I intend to go out with a whimper sipping bourbon in the office while the world go, goes by. Although I gotta admit, that sounds pretty good. We all have a lot of work to do this year, and I promise to do my part to move the college forward and make sure that everything is ready for the next dean to be successful. This is a good job. This is a great college. I continue to believe that the folks in this virtual room have the strength and intelligence and creativity to keep the college moving forward through difficult times. Together, we will sail the ship into calm waters and safe harbor. Of that, I am more certain than ever. Thank you for being here today. Do good work. Enjoy your work. Be gracious to one another. I am honored to work beside you. Have a great year. And go Cubs. Thank you. <laughs>